So welcome to the log master class. So I'm going to start off with three games to start off with that anybody can, can benefit from. Like we've done over here, <clears throat> chalk the log at the start of your session. It just makes a big difference to um, just reduce the chances of slippage when, you, when you're cleaning. Um, it's just simple, but everybody's going to benefit from that if you don't do it. Um, <clears throat> right, so the, the big, big thing that I'm going to start off with um, that most people are going to get value from because most people haven't heard this before unless they've seen it on my Instagram um, is finding the doing the drill that's going to find the optimum position to to the ideal rack and the ideal uh, position to start your clean from. So what I would recommend for everybody to do when the literally every session because we like to rotate logs that we use got seven or eight logs. Uh, when you go to comp, you, your log might be a little bit different. Um, so what I would recommend is let, let the log teach you where to be. So start off with the log overhead and then really control the eccentric down to the rack. That's probably going to give you just about your ideal rack position to, 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 um, to press from. And then from here, what we want to do is let the log roll down your body and then find where where it find the angle of the log at the bottom where it sits, and this is going to be where you where you start to clean from. So if you, so let, let's look at Jake do it as well. Start up overhead, super slow eccentric to the rack, and then slowly down. And let's see where. So that that's where Jake should be pretty much starting to clean from. Do do a clean and then straight into a press. That's very good. Excellent. So that that that's your. You, you hear a lot of people um, saying, "Oh, yeah." Some people have said to tilt the tilt the uh, tilt, the, tilt the handles down. Some people say keep them flat. Nobody knows. It's completely individual. It changes from log to log. Um, Jake's the ideal start position is slightly different to mine. It's slightly different to Joe's. Um, so. Yeah, for, take ownership and uh, find out your ideal position yourself. Use, use this drill, and it'll be an absolute game changer. Uh, especially because there's so many, so many strong guys that I see like on social media and stuff. But they're, they're so strong, but they're just giving themselves such a hard task to do the do the push press from. Like, like kind of, you don't really see people struggling to make the clean. Like people usually get it up, so we won't go too much into depth on the clean today. Um, which usually lost in the, in the press, and very often it's uh, somebody would just just be giving them such, so, such a hard time in the rack position. Um, so let, let's just see see one more rack.
for, for long times. I would highly recommend having a bit of a play around with them. Um, so just getting out, just watch where the, see if we can have a look where, when the lads do the clean. So just do two clean form press and just have a look at how the position in the belt, which is um, almost acting as a shelf to uh, stop the log going down. I find, it, I find it's really beneficial if people think of this um, less as a shelf that you're trying to use to lift the log, more as actually just something to, to stop it sliding down. Um, but for the purists out there who don't, who, who don't want to belt clean, um, they just want to, uh, so th this is going to be good actually because we've never, never done this before. So we just cheated all from the belt clean and, and this was fine. Um, but let, let's just have a go and see, see what happens. With, so we're going to use the, the same theory, right? So what, 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 what we want to do is basically, basically minimise the, the chance of the, the, the log sliding down. It, it, it's game over, like so inefficient. So what do you think we could do instead with the, with the, with the log clean if we haven't got a belt there? And if you like, assuming that if you try and clean the log position there, no matter how much you chuck yourself up, you know that it's just going to slip down and start high. So what could you do instead? What do you think? Pull the log in. Pull the log in. No. Yeah, to where? To you. Higher to me? No, higher. Well, that, that's the thing. You pull into your tummy there with that lock, and you say get yeah, another 50 kilos on, or whatever. What's going to happen as you go to drive up? It's going to, it's going to be sliding down, right? So, the thing that, that I would know, to be honest, I don't really recommend this because you can always use your belt. But some people who are against it, they can they 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 use this. I use this for stones. You know, like you guys use the belt, the belt cleans. Like I've actually gone to this technique on the stones. So basically, instead of trying to start it higher, accept it, lower. accept it, get get it to that point where it slips down to, and start it low, <laughs> and, and actually start it at the hip there. That's it. That looks good. And and you're actually start like start with a log at, at its bottom yeah. point. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so instead of trying to hold it high and then giving yourself a hard time squeezing like. Squeezing my head to try and keep it in. You're almost just saying, no, no, I'm not going to waste my energy. Let the log be where it wants to be and actually pra practice to try and not from that. So, even if you don't do this and you just stick with the belt cleans or the belly clean, like, it's a great, great assistance exercise for, for uh, hip power, triple extension, really easy to recover from compared to like stuff like barbell power cleans and stuff. Like, just, just give it full beans on that job. Yeah, well, whatever. Like, but you just, it just, it doesn't hurt, does it? That's no. what I mean. You know, like sometimes you might do some power things and that on the wrist or anything. Yeah, that's what I Really, really low impact uh, power exercise that's going to really, really transfer to uh, your, your stone loading, your, um, your sandbag loading, and stuff like that, because it's very, very similar movement pattern. So, very good assistance exercise. Anyway, let's move on to optimising the press. So you've got you've got a few different things there that you can try. You can try the try the belly clean or the kind of using a grip shirt. You can try getting like a belt um, to to act as that cap to stop it coming down. Or you can try a hip clean um, and or just have a bit of a play around with them all. Right. So let's talk about optimising the press. So in this first first kind of video or first lesson, I I, I want to basically. And we've got Jake in and we've got, got, got Joe, Jake and Joe. Jake, Jake would split jerk his, his PB, you push press your PB, Tim, Tim as well. Um, so, of purpose, we've got them in because we can, we can demonstrate those techniques. Like, like we did on the actual video, we showed that um, we demonstrate that actually the, the dip should be identical and we shouldn't be able to tell whether we're going to jerk, power jerk, push jerk, slip jerk, push press. So, we're going to cover that and make it. And, uh, and show, show you on the log as well um, today. So I want, want you to get the videos from the side and I want you to to, uh, to let, let's go into some presses. Ignore the cleans now and let's just do some let's do some reps from the chest. Use both logs okay? get the other of the log up. And what I want people to see here, I want you to see 
to, like assuming that people, most people listening to this are going to be self-coaching, yeah? which I would highly recommend because you're just going to, if you do understand what to, to uh, look for and learn, then you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to video your sets and just give it to yourself as you go along and improve. Um, so what we're looking for on the dip of the dip of the thread, we're looking for. So, so what can, can you have you got that video done, bro? Yeah. So what we're looking for from the start, right? I want everybody to just kind of imagine now that the body, the human body isn't there and it's just the lot, it's just the lot. Right? I want everybody who can see the video to look at the centre of the pins and I want you to imagine you know, self-coaching, doing training your own, giving you yourself feedback and I want you to ask yourself, are the pins moving vertically? Is the line perpendicular to the floor? That's pretty good. It's forward, that's why you stumbled. Yeah? Right, let's fix the line, Jay. A little bit better. Just control the dip a little bit more, mate, on the way down. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, well, basically, what we'll, 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 we'll want everybody to look for, and even if it needs rewinding the video, well, that's not what pin to look at, it's a pen. Um, but, ju but just looking like looking through the like the equator of the lock, and just pick a focal point in the background, and what we're looking for. It's is, is just, is just straight down. Regardless of what you're split jerking here or Joe's push pressing, let's, let's have a look at his dip and what we're looking for. That's pretty good. Look at the path. So just subtly, just load your hips a little bit more and let yeah, it, let yeah. it yeah, yeah, let's, let's see what happens when the dip forwards basically. And that dip, that dip's still pretty good actually. But you can see he's scampering his feet a little bit more because he's chasing forward. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's hard for him to land the jerk. Yeah? So that, that's where it, for, for people who jerk, You'll see the end of where they'll, they'll almost look like they'll run out of the ball and chase it forward. <coughs> they might go. Say it. Can we have a good one from Yeah, come on, Jake. Let's do it. Let's do one more. So just focus on maintaining that dip now. Perfectly. Yeah? Towards the integrity. Go on, one more. It's good. Yeah? And then, and then, by the way, this is, this is like an important thing what I want to do with these videos is like, I want to show you like organic, real training, real coaching. Yeah, we could just edit all this and just, just put the good ones in. But I, want, but I want people to actually see like, oh my, you can see, you can actually see the difference, yeah? And you can see them getting better. You can see that, yeah, these lads all post good, good lifts up all, like every week. But you should see the amount of, why like fail, fails that they do and how much learning it goes from from not months. Yeah. Um, so this is important for people to see on on these things. Um, let's so on the let, you just go and see if we can demonstrate a dip forward, like a typical hingey dip. Yeah. So on the and we'll compare the errors and then we'll show you how to do it. Come on. 
<coughs> Still pretty good, Joe, actually. Make it worse. <laughs> So let me talk about So with, with Jake, with Slip Jerks, who, who, who say yeah, the, the dip help me go into this dingy dip, the, the area you'll see is you can see people scampering around like that. Um, particularly if people power jerk, because if they dip forward and you, they'll get caught in this kind of position where they'll have to like press out. You, you might see me do it on Instagram. So um, where you can actually that's why I'm actually a fan of the split jerk as a, as a max, because if you're not a complete purist, your technique isn't perfect. If it gets heavy and your dip goes, you've always got, you've actually got a shot at kind of, you, you could do a really bad dip on, let's say, a high percent, like say 90%. You could do a really bad dip, mm -hmm. but then compensate so much you can kind of get under it. Whereas with the push press, the area that the areas that you see, you saw it a little bit with Joe. To be fair, it's it is really it's like the uh, do another one there, Joe. Actually, the same thing, just exaggerating that that dip. But the the areas that you see on the with the push press is the bar going out in front, um, people kind of finishing the press and then having to step back to recalibrate or. Press and then them having to step forward, so it's just just all inefficient. Or what you'll often see is uh, like very very common in, in strongman um, is pe people do the do the dip, the push press. The bar half is way out in front, and then they'll kind of really use like an upper body kind of strict press technique to to finish it off. So this is a really important point. So. Uh, maybe make some notes on this. Um, so what? So obviously, like, if, if the if, if the error on the dip is really exaggerated, and then somebody who's really particularly strong in the upper body, they go out in front like that, and they can kind of still make the rep. Logically, that they, they like you can see why a lot of people think take the approach of oh, you failed here. So what do a lot of people think? It's got stronger. Need to get stronger. Some failing here, so doing stuff like say uh, strengthening your shoulders, your triceps, your um, lockout, lockouts, and stuff like that. Yeah, it will be it, it will be really beneficial. And if you your technique stays exactly the same, your numbers will go up. Yeah, but have a look at the bar path from the side and just look at it objectively. Not and don't don't just like just think about what I've just shown you now. Like, don't just think, oh yeah, well, well so and so says this, so and so says that. Like, this is a non-negotiable. That dip should be, should be vertical, yeah. Um, and if it, if it's forward at all, you need to fix that. And if you couple that with, or oh, you're getting stronger on your, uh, shoulder, your shoulders and your triceps and stuff as well, then you're going to have an awesome recipe for success, yeah. So couple, couple that stuff. Uh, couple what I've just said. That's the non-negotiable, that, that, that straight line from the side, yeah? Let's, let's just see Tim, Tim do one on this one over. I think that's... Oh, right. No, in fact, let, let, let's just go to, let's... Now, now hopefully, people, uh, people watching this, if you watch the first 20 minutes, right? Look at the log, look at what the log's doing, and then we'll work backwards and we'll explain it, what to do with your body to make the log do that. That's the easiest of power, isn't it? It is, yeah. Inefficient element. Oh, right. oh, right. oh, right. oh, right. Look at the log, where's the log moving? Out in front. Most reps are out in front, and that's probably because of the dip. Good stuff. What about, like, um, if you video yourself on the side, yeah. you're consistent, and you are dipping slightly forward, or the log's tipping forward, yeah. what, what can people do? Like, what can you. I know, like looking back at my videos, it seemed like my hips were a bit rigid and like my knees might go out in front of yeah. my toes and stuff. Watch people. Fantastic like question. So you just said two two different. Well, sorry, two errors there. You just said what did you say? I said the uh, one would be the one point where um, when you dip the logs going forward, and yeah. the second one was uh, it rolling forward, right? Which is different. 
Well, no, it's the same, very often the same thing, right? It's just the two, like you've described two separate symptoms, but it's the same problem. You fix that dip, yeah? It's, the, it's going back to that thing that I said on the number, right? In any rack position, right? If you're, if you're thinking to yourself, going back to this cue that I hate and despise, which is elbows up, elbows up, elbows up, yeah? So if you're using these pathetic little muscle group in this whole kind of whole body exercise, you, uh, if you're, you, you imagine you don't clean 130 and you're having to think, oh, the log's wanting to roll forward, I'll, I'll keep it up with my, uh, with, with my, with my arms. Have you got any chance? No. So what we should be looking for is that thing that I keep coining, the weightless rack position. And you should be thinking, and you can do this every time you warm up, like you should be trying to find that position where you pause and you think, find that position where, look, write this down as a note, uh, find that position in the rack where your elbows don't want to drop. Yeah? So what, learn what you have to do with the rest of your body to, uh, to buy you that luxury. Yeah? If you're thinking, I'm not going to keep, you, you, you're done, you're not going to be any good. Facts. Um, so find that position where, 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 where almost your arms are redundant. And then once you've found that in the rack, then it's just whether you've got the mobility and skill of maintaining that throughout the dip and throughout the next phase. Does that make sense? Would you say a common error that people make which leads to the long roll is that they over dip or dip too fast? It can, yeah, that can, that, can be, that can be a separate thing. Two different things. Can we have a little demo with it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think. And again, let's set, let's try and get some of the footage from the side because that's that tells the story or not. Well, if I get it into a rack position now, yeah, it's very difficult for me. But I probably try to long press that just quite a while. Yeah, just go and really think about it. But if I, I know that if I can clean this now, it's not where I want it to be. It's not like there. Yeah. Like that is strange. Right. So that so that feels good, does it, Jay? Over dip or dip fast? Yeah. Yeah. No, I really like yeah. <laughs> Very strong, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, we don't we don't necessarily need to de demonstrate unless you want to. Um, but, but yeah, it is, a, it is a common error. That's quite a common error that... And they all lead to the same thing, by the way. They all, they all lead to the thing of giving yourself up, making the task harder to maintain that rack position. So Tim might be demonstrating here. But basically, what Tim is suggesting is he's got the rack, but some people will dip. They'll dip. They'll be in the sweet spot to start the drive up, and then they'll keep going because there's this kind of like subconscious logic going on in a lot of people that think, oh right, well, I need a bit more power. The deeper that I swap down, the deeper that I swap down, it's going to be, it's going to give me more legs. It's going to make it more power. Whereas actually, what, what, what we're doing, yeah, so you can see it right there, and yeah, that bottom position is, yeah, that, that, that was good if, you, if we got that on video, like good demonstrating a bad rep, yeah? Um, hip shift as a result. Oh, my, hip, my, my heels came up, yeah, yeah, heels came up, knees went forward, um, and he just went past that sweet spot. So, let, let, right, little, little taps, so let's look at these three, right? So I want you to just, don't, don't think about this, just stand up and then just stand in space, and I want you to just do five row row jumps, like you're trying to hip up the ceiling on every rep, right? Go, 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 So what, what you'll be able to see if you play that video back, that, that actually, what, what we're doing now, we're giving them the constraint there to, right, touch your head, but touch your head to the ceiling. So basically what, what they're doing without, it's a low skilled way of teaching your body how to basically get everything firing to produce as much force in that instance as possible through the ground to vertical, yeah? And what they were doing as a result, probably weren't thinking about it, what they were doing as a result, they were doing some pretty, pretty good dips in terms of they looked a lot shallower than, than Tim's demonstration there. Yeah.
Yeah? Because if you try and do that jump, but go into your squat position from there, yeah? So, so basically, what, that, that's, a, that's a nice little drill that you can, that you can do, that you can do um, before, you, before your overhead stuff, to just, just to learn that, that, like how far you should be dipping, take a video of it, yeah? The one where you jump in the highest is probably going to be a really good, good position to, to try and replicate with your dip. And you might actually learn a lot about your strongest and most powerful position right now. Um, and it's going to be subtly different, right? Like I know Joe Tim inside out, but um, you'll be able to see the see from the video that Joe turns his Joe's at his strongest position right now with his life dependent on it. Wow. it, it, it his, his hips are more open. His feet are his feet are facing out. Yeah. So if I got Joe to try and um, log out of the log textbook, um, obviously there's one written, but uh, with, with this kind of position, you know, toes forward, right? Joe is going to have a nightmare trying to maintain his torso integrity because, because basically that, that, that knee's going to run out of range of motion really quickly, which is going to cause the, the, the knee to either collapse in or because you can't go yeah, out. Yeah, feet just shift out. Or it's just going to give you a, 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 a like, it's going to limit your range of motion. So you're going to go to there, and then what you're going to do instead to get the dip, you're going to go there. Yeah? yeah. So having having Joe embrace his kind of posture, where he's, I, I, I actually suspect that if you watch your lot, they're very, very similar. I actually suspect that if you turn your feet out of there, I think it'll be even easier. Um, so that's just different. Just a little. Just a little. I don't think everyone just needs to like more yeah, like, 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 watch, watch watch this video back mm. and you'll see the your your jumping mechanics. And also it'll it, it'll also paint the picture of like say stance width as well without even thinking about it. Yeah? Jake's were, were quite quite narrow. Use well, I say quite narrow. And that's it, that's indicated that there's an optimal. I don't think there is. Like it's very individual. So you were narrower than these two, yeah, which would it, which think think about what you've been doing as load of resistance recently. You've been doing loads of like say front squats, and, yeah, with that that kind of stance. So I would say that yeah, you're, you're just basically basically watch the video of that and copy copy those positions. So people at home don't do it now, but when you go to the gym, like like try it, and you might you might be surprised. You might think, oh well. Like, like mine, personally, mine are, like, uh, uh, mine are quite odd actually. This, this, this one rotates out more than, more than the other one. And so, if you, so what I'm saying now is finding your strongest position right now. Um, the ethics of whether you should be trying to change that is beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. You know, like saying, well, opening up position so we get this kind of ideal, you know, fixing that thing where you figure out. But anyway, that's a different thing. But, but that, that shows you, I've shown you a couple of things there, how you can actually find your most strong, like strongest and most powerful position right now. So let's do another, another rep and we'll talk about optimizing the, the bar path a little bit more. Oh, sorry, well, going back to Jake's question, that didn't answer. Like, brilliant question, because this was one of the points I was going to cover. Like, um, what was the question again? Well, you said the two things. Um, one of them was if you are videoing from the side, yeah. um, how can you fix it if it's too far away? Yeah. I think we've just talked about it there. I would, I would say, like, I, I'm a massive, massive fan of like point constraints led coaching and, and training. So I would basically just get, just get you to do, like, like I do with you guys in the program, and stuff, like get you to a three technique and go for the whole mark most of the time. So I've just got, I've just basically giving you, like we say all the time, like giving you more practice in, in the area that where you need. So stuff like, say, for assistance or, or forget assistance, as a warm before you go walk, this proprioception drill, just to build your awareness, etc. I'd, be st I'd probably be starting, if you felt there was an issue, I'd be starting with a light a lot, so you can feel the, like maybe the third of the board or whatever, and I'd be doing long pauses in the rack, 
remind yourself so then what you need is the proprioceptive awareness and control to get from the top of the rack to the bottom of the dip and then back again yeah so to 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 get the perfect dip and then initiate the drive up and it needs to be but there's no if you think about it logically like we said around with the dumbbell there's no point in trying to fix the dip if your rack position not there you need to do the rack yeah as a prerequisite then can you maintain the position at the bottom of the dip? Because if you can maintain it at the bottom of the dip, the rack, that's, that's showing you that there isn't a mobility issue. Do you understand what I mean? Because that's what a lot of people think. They think, oh, oh, oh it's my mobility on my ankle. But, uh, and I've done it to a few people on Instagram recently. So they said, oh yeah, I've got an ankle problem, I've got a foot problem. So when I, when I, when I dip, my foot turned down. And then I've scrolled through their Instagram and show the sprint screens, then when they've done it without realizing they've got to a bottom, bottom of the position, foot's perfect flat flat on the floor. So actually, what's that what's that in the <laughs> They've got a good rack and they can achieve the bottom position, but then it's all still messing up and going forward. So it's quite forward for these people in the drive. But you can get down into the bottom and it's fine. Yeah, so so it's just yeah, it's just a, a technical issue. It's like a lot of people are oh, I need to go do my need to walk drills, I need to go do this, I need to do bandage, fancy stuff, whatever. Whereas actually if they've ticked off all the, the prerequisites, but they're just not they're not they've not got the path, the connection and the system. So so what, what's the answer, Joe? What's the answer? Exactly what we always say. So and then I think this is one of the one of those exercises that you cannot go too light on. If anything, most people will go too heavy. Just get <clears throat> before you add weight, and this goes for everybody. Before we add weight to the log, get that get that bar path on that dip and the dip and drive going as a non-negotiable. And if you can't quite work it out, make sure go back to the basic. Go back to getting the rack position better. Go back to drill number one that we said at the start. Yeah, start overhead and then slow eccentric to here. Yeah. If you need to, like maybe maybe just do do a few reps from the chest just to make sure. Super slow eccentric to here. Have a feel around. You know, like you did before with that, and you're like fiddling around to see what the, the best position is. Do that and then check it. Do a controlled eccentric return into it. Yeah? Yeah, that feels right. That angle's right today. Yeah? And then go to here and then see what it feels like after you've cleaned it first, yeah, make sure you can get that consistently, yeah, um, and by the way, like, it's so, like, you don't, it's not just a thing to do once, like, this can change from, with, like, you guys doing, competing in, when you're 100 kilos, it's completely different positionally to when you're at 83, yeah, it will be completely different to when you're 88, yeah, completely different to when you're at 90 to when you're at 97, yeah, your positions are going to change on this big time. Even a couple of kilos here and there. Yeah, so so check. Like you've like if you've got access to a lock, you've always got the answer. And you can always work it out. Yeah. The big one for me is when I come in and just pull a different log out of that one. Even used it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I Yeah. Um, yeah. And I have to spend you know just on the mats come in and start logging out for using yeah. every session, but. Pull a different one out, and yeah, you spend 10 minutes, otherwise, it's like working up to like 80 or 90 yeah. kilos for me, and that's going to be really difficult. Mm -hmm. Good. So, I'm a massive fan of like, some people might do like, say, kind of do your heavy working sets and then do stuff as assistant. 
I actually like personally doing stuff like this. I actually like getting it right with super light weights. You know, doing like a really light five by five, at whatever, forty percent, fifty percent. Getting your positions where you can really bias. You can think my rack position is not great today, so I'm going to pause with the rack a little bit longer and make sure that it feels good. Yeah, but make sure that you're doing a weight that's light enough to afford that without fatiguing you before you add weight. Um, and uh, like I suspect if you do this and tick all this stuff off before you add weight, I think you'll be surprised. Uh, even, even if you've got like a sweat on and you're a bit more out of breath getting up to you to uh, work in sets than you usually would be, like don't be surprised if it feels a lot better than usual. Um, Right, so let, let, let's talk about um, another couple of stuff now. So, with the log compared to the axle, right, so they uh, you see this like head back versus head through, head through thing. So, um, with the log, I, I think you are getting comfortable with your, with your head back or looking at <coughs> the ceiling, like look, pick, picking a focal point behind you is very, very important to develop as a skill. Because what they, because it's going back to this uh, bar that thing. You might want to just come back to this, come to this log, um, and let's just, let's just exaggerate it, right? So yeah, just do just do you know just do, in fact we're going to try and try and progress yours even we're going to try and progress even more. Just be normal. What do you think about it? Yeah, I, I like this, right? Because we we'll use Tim as an example because he's demonstrated a fantastic bar pattern. Yeah? It looks really, really good. But I think if you watch this back and apply this next thing, I think we can make this even better and even more efficient and even easier, right? <coughs> what I want you to think of, think of doing is you, uh, when you're in this rack position, you look comfortable. And I think that if you can make yourself like consciously uncomfortable by extending your neck a little bit more, I think it's gonna it's gonna bring the log even closer to the centre. Um, and it's gonna shorten that range of motion a little bit. So cue what I want you to think of is I want you to keep the the log in contact with your neck as late as possible. Yeah. So trying to look look up behind you like this. But basically what you'll be able to see if you if you play that if you Record it slow enough when you're looking back, you'll, you'll see that just as you start the drive, the dip's great, the line's great. But you'll see as you start the drive, there's a bit of daylight here in between. So get a bit of daylight. This is like fine tuning. This is going to, I think this is going to be really good, honestly. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you just compare your normal rep, that felt easy, and then you just compare it to that, the bar speed was even different. Yeah, it looked, it did look faster. Yeah, that so that, that's a cute strategy. Yeah. Well, let's give it a go, Joe. Joe, posturally, 
bit like they're quite different, Joe and Tim. And you can see that uh, Tim can achieve this kind of extension in his upper back. I think a little bit easier than, than what Joe can. Joe's a little bit, in my opinion, is a little bit more like rounded shoulder like that. Um, so he, he's got he's, he's got a harder time getting into extension. So you can see what what you, like Tim's subtle little change was was basically from his neck or cervical extension where he's going like that. You can see what Joe was Joe was doing instead on that first rep. He was kind of extending his lower back, hips forward, and this is what you see a lot of people doing. And if you go into, let, let's just go into that position now. You don't have to do the log, just do it here, right? If you go into this position here, where you, the, the log might feel really good and weight was there, but you train, right? That exact position now, you train the dip. Just you, you, yeah, just falling backwards, or you meet it. Or you go here when you hit extend it, right? Vertical torso, what you have to do is all your knees go forward like that. Yeah? So then you, the, the, the result of the same thing, the torso collapse, knee coming forward. Yeah? So you're actually making it, yeah. making it worse. Yeah? So, someone like Joe, but you might, to be honest, you might, might be able to just fit, fix it after doing, doing a few like kind of. I, I'm a massive fan of like, say, say mobility stuff, actually doing the specific thing that you want to get good at. So, for Joe, the first thing that I'd get him to do would, would actually do like, you know, let's say if you do, you, you know, next time you do your street presses, maybe even next week, instead of just thinking, oh, how many I can do and getting you a couple body strong or whatever, just think, drop the weight down, think of it as the as a positional drill, where you're pausing in the rack and you're really exaggerating that extension there, not here, yeah? yeah. So maybe even subtly, just practice getting in this position now. Maybe even subtly, just to give you that, that awareness of what to do lower body. Just just break the knees a little bit and get the weight in your legs. So hold that position there, so you can still, because that's going to allow you to, to dip with this, and now get here. And you can see he's uncomfortable getting, getting there, yeah? You can see that he's, he's not getting that head back full. So, um, so that's a good way to make sure that you can, you've still got the, the lower body in it. Because if we just go here, you're like, oh yeah, it's yeah, great. But it's not because you're never going to be able to dip with that. Um, so make sure you're in a position that when you do the strict presses as a system, in my opinion, um, we should be doing the strict presses that are going to transfer well to your push presses, which may, which will probably be with most people, a bit of an ego here because it will be more difficult because you're doing it in this kind of position that you're going to be able to maintain when you do that. So it's just going to make sure that you that actually instead of just getting better at strict presses, we're actually getting better at something that's going to transfer that to push press. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So for Joe, what we do before doing any kind of mobility stuff would be I reckon doing two or three sessions, doing like even if you go down to the that log or whatever as an extra thing, just working on control the eccentric and really trying to get that extension for your upper spine in your neck. I think you'll get you'll get better at that with the pause in the rack and slow eccentric. But if you're struggling, stuff like say foam roll in your upper back and say if you're going on the back extension machine backwards and stretching out, doing a few bits of that drugs, you know adding into your little warm-up routine. I think that'd be that'd be really good. Um, but let's see, see what you see what your reps like in a heavy one. So so that's the cue for you tonight is uh, daylight. Get rid of the daylight between you now. Good. So another another uh, thing what I get these things to do actually. In fact, you're doing strict press twice at the night. So do oh yeah, I think not. So maybe do one of the sessions as a heavy session. And then the other session is a for you a position and mobility, and also as well you, the the error because what what you're doing now because you you're going further you you actually get in that further back more extended position when you're doing the rep and you're finishing the rep with your head back better 
what you're actually doing is you're having to step forward like that, and that's just because you're not just because you're not used to it. So actually doing doing your strict presses in this position, um, and and actually um, and you just just practicing finishing. Yeah, and remember the key, key that I said to you the other day, right? The skill that is, in my opinion, for you guys, like. We're not like you want to get better at strict pressing. Put you put all your weight through your heels, yeah. And put yourself you put yourself more into that position, more into that position. You're probably going to strict press more weight. But for you guys to get your push press better, I think it'd be better doing doing the same, practicing the same kind of principles, but instead of the weight being through your heels, where do you think the weight should be? Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, it's going to be harder, and it's going to be it's going to be tougher. You're going to, have, you're going to find it more challenging. The yeah, you're not probably not going to be able to lift as much weight, but it's going to get you. It's going to get you doing the, the right things at the lower body. That's going to you're going to be able to dip with when you when you go back to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Got a couple of questions. Students progressing from a skinny one, I feel a bit claustrophobic in the rack. Is it just a case of practice to get used to that? Is yeah. there anything you can do to get just, it? Just practice more steps, spend more time there, yeah. Definitely. It is going to be subtly totally different. The range of, like, can be a bit more uncomfortable, but then again, you might you might actually think that the, you might actually find that it's easier to clean um, as, you go, as you go up to a, a big log. Um, and you might, you might actually just find that because it's, at the end of the day, it's sitting here where you, but it, it, it is really uncomfortable, and it's not just the weight. Obviously, the weight uh, compounds the issue, but it, it's actually, it's actually the, the awkwardness of the the thing crushing on you as you. So, yeah, just spend more time, and uh, if you, you pr practice it. Go and do a thousand reps, and if you're still struggling, give us a shout, and we'll go. Next one. one more. Have you got any advice on bike pressing? Um, it, it, depend, it depends on the context, really. Um, yeah. yeah, if it's for, like, I, I don't think there's that many, I don't think there's that many, it, like, examples of time where, where I would recommend to use it. I think most, most people would be able to get the, 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 the push press quicker. I've seen one person do it, really, or a couple of people do it really, really well. Uh, when Sam Martin did 90 for 14 in 75 seconds. Yeah, maybe it's such a way in a competition where you're going for well all the double figures. Yeah. But like, that's not very common in places. Is it? so no, no, it's not like that. Uh, I think, um, did, did Shane do some back presses? Did, did, did he do one? Did that do one? Did that do one? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think um, I think Shane MST Systems. He did. Uh, I think he did some bike pressing when he did one twenty for six uh, recently. Yeah. Where, whereas uh, I, I, ju I just think I think he'd do one twenty for six push press even easier. Yeah, you're saying that you think Shane did one twenty bikes for time. Did bikes for time. Bikes for time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, 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 that's the point. Like, like I think they. Could, it could probably do seven, yeah, yeah, seven, seven if you were. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's certainly a good skill for that. Um, and again, you've seen it the the log lift championships, haven't you? Where somebody's coming. I think Kira Skoski came and did the one seventy open at once, and then he went to a push press after that. And I just think that it's just showboating, really. I just think it's pointless. I think you should you'll be doing the lift that's basically the most efficient to hit your goal weight. Within it, I'm not a fan personally. Some people are good at it. I'm not a fan of switching techniques during, you know, say doing a long for reps, to get like four in really quickly, viper, and then go to push press. I think most people will be better just <coughs> doing their most efficient technique all the way through, um, because that kind of swap over in uh, techniques. That, that that, 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 just is that yeah, that that's it. Yeah. That's the hardest set. It, it's the same principle work because we're going to do we're going to do stones in the next series. Like when we're when we're swapping over from like one motion to the two motion 
to the whack and load and that transition and how it can trip, trip you up a little bit. Um, but but in terms of in, in terms of in terms of using it as an accessory, I think it's a great assistance exercise, a bit like what we're doing with Joe before. I think it's absolutely great. If that, I didn't mean to do a bad for that. No. I just came by you saying trying to be as powerful as possible. So yeah. Cool. So, uh, so I think it's an uh, absolutely brilliant, fantastic exercise for um, for whole body power, triple extension, low learning curve. Like a lot of the benefits that you get from it, <coughs> it's basically, uh, if you look at it on YouTube, it's basically it's a muscle snatch. It's a muscle snatch from the hip um, with a log which is like an Olympic lifted variation, which is great. But if you go and do like snatch variations for the most strong man people, strong women who listen to this, it's probably too, too technical for the benefit that you're going to get from this. Whereas actually if you just go up to a log, basically just think you're doing a log clean, but then you just let it go over your head and get better at that, you are going to get better at be producing more power with your whole body. Like it's just going to be a great assistance exercise without necessarily being skillful. Um, so say for you, for instance, you wanted to throw it in the off season, like, and you're like, oh, fancy it, Mick, well, since some people do snatches or whatever, do you think what you should do? Do some, like, long vipers, because we wouldn't even need to tell you what to do. It's yeah, just self-explanatory. Do you know some people do it, so it's low skill, low Yeah, low, low skill, massive reward. Yeah. Like, you think of, like, your, your top position of your, you're doing, you, you, you guys are doing really, we're going to be throwing next week. So if you'll see these guys, the technique on the, as the, as the extent of the throw, practicing that with your, your, your log snatch or your, your log viper presses or whatever. So yeah, I think it's a great exercise. Practically in competition. Um, More than like, like, but, uh, I mean, if, if it's specific, a specific question for a competition, um, like, don't be afraid to message me on uh, uh, the scenario, and I'll probably explain why you shouldn't be doing it. In my Five minutes, guys. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, let's do. Right. Let's just just touch a little bit on now. Like, just explore. Go back to this. Right. I want you guys out your comfort zone again. So, what I want you to do is <laughs> let's go for a jerk. Let's go for a jerk. Okay. In fact, Jake, you push press. Because Jake more confident jerk in the one that you guys do. Just think of the cue for a 
relax rack on that dip. Right? 
if they're using the same amount, or well, same amount of glue, yeah, but they they they, they don't use the cast. What other, what other part of the body can they use? Like generally, ends up being in my wall. You see it. People finish there, and then they go here. Yeah, and they just say, if you have ten percent more power, <coughs> you'd be able to save all this body area. It's like so that extension is kicking in. Yeah. Later on, as it's already rolling up your chest from your legs driving, it's yeah. like a little bit of extra push. Feels like that finishes it off somewhat. Exactly, yeah. And then it's the same same principle. We're using this upper body as a tiny limited resource, yeah? Um, yeah, so that says that I ended up jumping slightly backwards when it had to wait and I forced it backwards. It's hard to Is that the clean you know, pick up on the thread? It's hard to say without seeing it, but like don't, like if you if you if you if you go in ever so slightly backwards and you push press this. Like a brand, like like that, it's good. Good better off back than you are. Yeah, you see, you see, like a lot of weightlifters and they'll put push press and they'll they'll scoot back with them with the feet like that as they as they press for reps. If you're doing that, probably good. Definitely better than going forward and chasing balls, which is the the big area that you see in stronger. Let's just see. Let's just now imagine you finish on a really good one. Arms are super relaxed. They're not doing anything. And you just you bring, you bring those cards in. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 You do that I gave somebody to do the other day to to, to find this. Uh, is basically just and you can all do this because I want you to feel this, is just lean, lean against something, get up onto your toes as high as you can, and squeeze your quads and your glutes as hard as you can. That's triple extension. Yeah, you can feel triple extension. Look at these guys. What they're doing here. Yeah. So calves, quads, glutes. Right. So that position there is the exact position that we want to visit for a split foot second. Yeah. And before you hit that position there, if you, if your log leaves your body um, before. Or you lose that connection with your torso before you achieve that position, you're leaving kilos on the table. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, so think about that. So that's a great, again, little, little awareness to imagine. Do you have this little warm up on your overhead days? Yeah, feel that. Yeah, you might have taken like, oh, God, my calves are, my calves are a bit tight, whatever. Feel that. Yeah, and then you might go into some jumps and feel that dip. Yeah. So hope, hopefully from some, some of these ideas, like it's given a bit of when you see other people like on social media doing like jumping around and doing like all, all stuff that seems weird, hopefully it's providing a bit of context and a bit of like a rationale behind like making you think that oh yeah well maybe I could try that because that's my area. Yeah, video from the side I can see this happening, so I'll go and try this. Yeah. So hopefully it's got got people. Have you got any questions to finish off? No? That's it. Right, done. Thank you. Well done.